Good morning, this is Jacob Folger, artist and sculptor, and this morning we're going to make a fairy house. We're working in polymer clay. The brand I'm using is Sculpey 3, although you could probably use any kind of brand. And uh, I'm using the color black because the finishes I do look really good on black. Uh, start off with kneading and conditioning clay to get it nice and pliable and easy to work with but also to mix up all the ingredients on the inside of the clay now, i've been doing that for a few minutes now and now what i'm going to do is shape it into a ball like that and then from there i'm going to start to roll it into a ball that's nice and smooth as a starting point now you could do this uh, in any size pretty much could be smaller could be larger and now the ball is is really nice and smooth nice and smooth and that's a good starting point for us now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take uh, my hand like this on on these two sides and my other hand in the same shape like that and I'm going to squeeze turn it and squeeze again and basically what I'm doing is forming it into a cube and I just keep on rotating it to get all sides of it kind of flat in the shape of a cube And then from there, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my hands like this and I'm going to squeeze so that if this was the front of the house, it'd be uh, thinner or not as wide here as the top. Kind of moving towards the shape of uh, somewhat haphazard fairy house which is a traditional look for fairy houses I want to try to get that uh, a little skinnier so we're kind of looking at like that at this point now I'm going to take this hand like this again and I'm going to start squeezing here at the top, forming it to be what I call a gable. Basically, we're trying to get that slant for the roof of the house. The one thing we want to make sure of is while we're squeezing one side, the um, the other sides will will uh, come out. They'll deform, and so we have to be shaping everything at the same side, same time. So basically, if I if I squeeze here, this side will come out. So we have to just um, kind of pay attention to that. So now I'm just uh, continuing to shape it. Now the um, the corners here, here, those corners are kind of rounded at this point. So what we can do is we can take these two fingers and just basically squeeze on that corner, sharpening it. See how it sharpened that? And we want to go around and and get each one of those corners and kind of sharpen it like that. Okay. 
Okay, now what we're going to do is take a bit of clay here and we're going to make the roof. You definitely want to knead it and get it nice and soft and pliable. Squeeze it into the shape of a, of a ball like that. And then roll it into a nice smooth ball like we did when we started with the main house. Like that. Now we're going to roll it into an oblong shape like that. And we're going to keep rolling it. To make it long enough to go that length there and that length there. And so we probably want it to be a little bit longer than that. So we'll roll it a little bit longer. So basically we're trying to cover the this uh, shape here. Now what we do is we flatten it. And we want to flatten it until, as we flatten it, it will widen. And we want to flatten it until it's wide enough to cover the depth of the roof. So that's it there. So we want to bring it a little bit further. You also can take your hands like this and just widen it that way by stretching it a little bit. Then you can put it down on a table and just get the front and back edge uh, uniform. And we can do it again a little bit more when it's on the house. So I'm going to put it on the house like that. Kind of pinch it. Now we got this long side here, but we're going to cut that off with a pair of scissors. So it's shaped like that. And then again, with our hands like this, we're squeezing. And then also, <clears throat> we're uh, squeezing the front edge of the of the roof to make it more uniform. In the back, we can squeeze the house itself to fit better underneath the roof. So a lot of this is just squeezing and trying to make everything uniform. Just keep on squeezing. Another thing you can do is you can take your thumb and run it down, kind of slide it down the front of the house to smooth it. Now you can take the, uh, the end of the roof like this and just flare it out a little bit. On the uh, the peak of the roof, you can pr 
press down like this. to kind of create a bow in it further adding to the traditional look of a fairy house and the roof and smoothing with your thumb or fingers also Just continuing to shape. Then we can take a, <clears throat> a sculpting knife like this and just clean up the lines a little bit. You could add a little bit of definition to the to the boards that meet there. Do that on the other side as well. Up underneath here. And here, okay, now we're going to set that aside for a minute and going to uh, start off a little kneading, a little conditioning. We're going to roll to uh, or shape it to a ball. And then roll it into a ball so it becomes nice and smooth. And then we're going to start rolling it on the table like this to create a long noodle that we will use to shape the doors, create the doors and windows. Now, when you're rolling this, if you're applying a lot of pressure, the noodle will become flat and it will just kind of bump along and you don't want that. So if you lighten up a little bit and keep rolling, it will probably come back to a round shape and roll easily. If not, you might have to start over. And you want to move your hand along the uh, length of the noodle as you roll it and that will help it become longer and thinner. And we do want it to be fairly, uh, fairly thin. Now what you can do is to make things easier is, is you can cut it so it's easier to roll. And you want to make sure that it's uniform. So if there's a wide point, you can concentrate on that as you go. Now, that's almost there. We'll get the rest of it here and roll that the rest of the way. And it seems like, to me, like that should be enough to do what we need to do as far as the door frames and window frames go. What I'm going to do just to make it a little easier is I'm going to cut a length of it and we're going to do the door first. And I'm going to start it here. 
I'm going to have it go that way a little bit. And then I'm going to have it come around like that and come back. Kind of shaping it as I go. I'm going to bring this here to a little bit of a peak by squeezing it here like that. And I'll take my knife and just cut that off right there. And I'll use this sculpting tool like that I uh, did on the peak of the uh, roof here. I'll put a little peak uh, break there. Then I'll uh, take my knife. It's better to cut with a knife. And I'll cut a little piece here for the door uh, jam or threshold right there, like that. And then just mark that also for the brakes. So that's basically what we have there now. And then what I can do is I can take my uh, knife and draw in lines or carve in lines to define the wood planks of the door. Like that. And I can take a small uh, a very small ball like this I can drop it on the doorknob on the door and that's going to be the doorknob and now to make sure that this is all secure to the house keeping in mind that we had done a lot of kneading prior to so the clay is very warm and soft and, and therefore melds into each other and will stick very well. Still, we can take our thumb and applying gentle pressure in circles, moving our thumb in a circular motion, we can press the, the um, door frame into the, into the house and make it a lot more sturdy. Now we can take uh, another noodle of clay, just make sure it's going to be, I want it to be a little bit thinner than the door frame, so I'm just going to roll it out here a little bit more. I'm going to cut a piece to make it easier to work with, and I'm just going to make sure it's uniform. And then I'm just shaping it while I lay it on. I can use the stopping tool to move it. Use my uh, my tool to cut it. And then I can use the uh, this sculpting tool to mark the breaks in the wood. Like that. 
and I can do circles with light pressure to make sure it's seated really good on the house. Then I can take a sculpting tool or knife and draw in the shape of uh, the window on the inside. Now I'm going to roll a, another piece here. Just make sure it's nice and uniform and thin enough to work with. And I can uh, cut it. I'm going to make this, this one a circle, as you can see. I can use a sculpting tool to, uh, to join the two parts, the two ends. And then I can use that also to uh, shape it by pushing out on the inner edge. On the inner, uh, to mark, make the windows, um, markings for the window, I can use a sculpting tool like this. And just smooth that out in the inside a little bit. Now on this side I'm going to put a little window. Just go ahead and roll that. Get it to the shape I want. And to a uniform, nice and uniform shape. And then I'll use my knife to cut it. Of making it the shape I want. The roof is kind of makes it hard to get up under there and peek that out. I'm going to try to work with that. Try to just kind of moving it to be the shape I want. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this knife here. I want to get that to be the shape of the top of the door in the lower window on the front of the house. So I'm just going to press up like that. And kind of shape it the best I can with my, uh, with my tool. Kind of like that. 
and then I'm going to take my uh, sculpting tool, actually I'm going to use a knife. Like that. And I'm going to do one on the other side. Roll out the, uh, <clears throat> the noodle. Make it nice and uniform and thin enough to work with. Cut a piece. Let me try it differently this time. This time I'm going to put it on like that. So there's all kinds of ways you can do it. If it works better one way, do it that way. Then try different things. If you have little cut marks on the house, you can just heal them up. And then you can use uh, a knife to uh, draw in the, the window lines, like that. Going back, we can take our thumbs and put them in against the, uh, wood, the wood framing and do circles. And circles on this side. And then I think we'll do a, a back door for it. So I'm just going to try to put it at about center. Like that. Cut that off. Cut that off. go and uh, <clears throat> mark our mark our wood marks for the uh, joints put the lines in for the door to identify the wood planking Make yourself a uh, little doorknob, drop it on there, and circles to press it in, circles to do the door frame. And then we'll do a window.
so I'm going to this way I'm going to do it differently again I'm going to cut the separate parts and also um, when you're handling the house ideally you'll just uh, cradle it in your hand because um, you know just gripping it can actually deform it And then take your uh, sculpting tool and make your marks for the joints of the window. And sculpt in your window lines on the inside. Okay, now we're going to work a little bit on the roof, and so with the house facing you, um, the front of the house facing you, you can take your hands like this. We don't want to handle the house so much right now because it's got all the windows and doors on it, but I just want to give this roof a little bit more of a fairy shape to it. So I'm pressing here on this side just below the peak of the roof, and then just sort of kind of moving this over like that. To give it more of a more haphazard appearance. I'm shaping it a little bit. So that's kind of what we got there. Now I'm going to show you how to do a, a kind of a neat way to do shingles <clears throat> rather than applying uh, separate single shingles on what you can do is um, draw a line at the peak of the roof right here with your sculpting tool like that at the very peak and then you can uh, draw lines or basically carved lines into the roof going that way slightly bowed okay and then uh, <clears throat> Then you can draw lines uh, this way, and uh, and you want to stagger them, so you like you have that one in the center there, and then on the on this side you do one there. And you can maybe, you know, put a little slant on them or put them in a slight angle like that. Just to kind of give that haphazard look. Like that. 
and then do the same thing over here. And then just uh, and then just do your lines going in the other way. like that and then just uh, you know adjust the roof I'm gonna bring that close for you to see like that and now we're gonna do a chimney Let's pick up all this clay here Set this up back out of the way for a minute. Roll the ball. Roll it into an oblong shape. Like that. Squeeze it the same way we squeeze the house to make it the shape it is. And you can take a uh, a tool like this, or really you can use anything. You can use this. You can use uh, the back end of a paintbrush and make a hole in the top for a flu for the shape of a flu. And then you can kind of put an angle on it because it's going on the roof here. Going on the roof like that, so it's got it should have an angle on it, and then you can score this to uh, give it a ben better bond to the roof. Score the roof where you're going to put it on, then use your uh, put your chimney on. And you can rotate it like that to um, set it into the clay a little bit better. Set it into the roof a little bit better. That's kind of a tall chimney, but that's okay. I'm going to bend it this way, I think. Kind of give it that whimsical appearance. And then you can go back and just shape it wherever you need to to make it the you know look the way you want. And then in a few minutes we'll do a put a finish on it. But let's show you what we got here. Now you can put uh, you can do smoothing on it. Uh, in the video description uh, down below the video, you're going to find a tool and supply list um, of the clay baking instructions and also two videos on how to smooth clay, uh, polymer clay. So uh, take a look down there, um, do some smoothing on it, get it the way you want, and then when we come back, we'll do a finish. Okay, we're going to be working in Pearlex pigments for the finish. And the best way to uh, use this product is to take a paintbrush, open it up, dip it in just a little ways like that, and then move that to the lid of either the product or, you know, another lid that you have, like I have with the bronze here. And um, so... What we're going to do is the best way to apply the bronze itself is 
to uh, use a finger, get some on your finger like that, swirl it with your thumb to kind of subdue it, and then just apply it like this. So I'm going to do um, all the woodwork like that. So every time I dip my finger, I I, uh, I swirl it to kind of get get a little bit more subdued on there. I'm gonna put it on the edge of the roof here as well. frame It just uh, tends to look a lot more pretty that way, applying it with your finger. That's mostly for the bronze. I mean, the other finishes, the other colors, it doesn't seem to matter so much. Now, I'm, uh, I have a rag in my lap and I use that to, for cleaning my hand or the, uh, my, my paintbrush. For the windows, I want to do, I want to take the silver, when I dab, when I dip it into the lid to get the, to get the uh, pigment on it, I take off the excess, excess by wiping it on the table or patting it on the table or a paper towel. Again, I, I do try to cradle a house. And uh, also on the, um, on the doorknob. Make sure I get this doorknob also. And then I clean the uh, brush again on the rag. And I'm going to use a little bit of green on the door. And on this door. Like that. Clean the brush. Pick up a little silver and touch up the doorknob. And then I'm going to do my favorite color, purple, on uh, the house. I like to always finish the bottom because that gives the finish continuity throughout.
One thing that you can do is you're trying to get it, the brush into like holes or places and you don't want to get it everywhere else. You can just set the brush like that and then move it in like that. See, I didn't get it on any of those spots, but the brush is relatively big. It's because of the way I set it in there like that. If you do get it on the on the other parts, you can go back and touch it up. So here's another spot that I want to get without getting it on the all the framework around it. I set the brush in at a slight angle and then press it in. Now I've been thinking about how I want to do the roof and I think I'm going to do it in silver and the chimney too. I get a bit of the silver there, dab it off. I'm holding my finger to the back of the chimney to support it so it doesn't bounce all around while I'm doing it. I'm kind of doing a subdued look so it looks a little antique like. And this is what it looks like. It's definitely haphazard, kind of looks like a Typical fairy house. There it is. Now you're going to want to bake this and you'll go to again to the video description down below the video to get the baking instructions and bake it. I want to show you how to pin it before you bake it. And some wire here. This is uh, galvanized steel wire. And what I do here is this is 18 gauge. This will be in the tool and supply list. Um, I'm going to cut a little excess here so I have it uh, easy to use. Okay. Now, what I'll do is I'm actually going to make, uh, I'm going to do two pins. Now, the thing is, you might you might like to just have the option of putting this in a potted plant or a little fairy garden or something like that. But then you might not want to do that right away. You might want to put it on your dining room table or a windowsill or something like that. So I'm going to show you how to do an optional pin, okay? What you do is you take your wire, put it up into the bottom like this, and then rotate it to widen the hole and then you can do you can do as many as you want to make it easy to pin the wire would then stick into the ground or whatever wherever you're putting it if you're putting this outdoors 
you should get yourself some spar varnish and put two coats of it on the on the uh, on the house, and that will seal it from the water. Just it, it'll protect it. I mean, um, the the outdoors, the weather is can be very damaging to things that are not meant to be out there. I'm not saying it's not meant to be out there, but um, if you're going to put it out there, you should seal it. You should take care of things that you make. That's all I'm suggesting. So in this case, I'm going to have I'm going to have I have two there. I'm going to make one more. And then when you bake this, the holes will be there and you can just put the wire in to act as pins to hold it, to stand it up straight in, in the garden. And that's it. If you like this kind of content, uh, please subscribe to my channel and uh, please comment. Let me know what you think of the video and please also give me a thumbs up and um, like the video uh, keep in mind also that I do make things for people and um, if you'd like something made just for you just let me know and uh, please visit my art shop thank you so much for watching and have a great day